I'd like to show how to calculate the theoretical price of a bond, assuming a spot rate curve, this one right here. These are spot rates, or we could call them zero rates. So here I'm going to show the calculation for the theoretical price of a bond using spot rates. And by the theoretical price, we mean the present value if we discount the future cash flows. We need a few assumptions for a bond. Those are highlighted in yellow, starting with the face value of the bond, also called the principal or par value, which is typically either $1,000 or what we see here, $100. And we also need to know the coupon rate for the bond. So we are assuming here a 6% per annum coupon rate. As I've often mentioned, interest rates, coupon rates, really should be expressed in per annum terms to avoid confusion, and then we let the user make adjustments if needed. So this is 6% per annum, and notice the way that it's labeled. It's a semi-annual coupon of 6%. So that means 6% per annum paid semi-annually, so it's 3% every six months. That's what the semi-annual means. It's the coupon payment frequency periods per year of two. Then we also have the maturity of the bond here. So it's going to be a two-year bond that matures in two years. And an assumption for the zero rates, which are also called spot rates. So for our purposes here, a spot rate is synonymous, synonymous with a zero rate. And the, that means, the zero rate means we would discount a single cash flow at that rate to the present value. And so I have illustrated a zero rate curve here that's upward sloping and also charted over here. And then the label indicates continuous compounding. I'm following Hull's table two. So this is 5% per annum with continuous compounding. As I've mentioned in previous videos, the interest rate compound frequency is a key ingredient. If we're not told that, if we're just told 5%, we don't have enough information. We need to know 5% with continuous compounding or whatever is the compound frequency. So that we can now compute the theoretical price of the bond because here the schedule of future values, well, we already know that. This is, each coupon is $100 multiplied by 6% divided by two because each coupon is every six months and our schedule is six months maturities. So we have a coupon of $3 at six months, a coupon of $3 at one year, a coupon of $3 at 18 months, and then a final cash flow installment that includes the coupon of $3 plus the return of principal. So for most bonds, most of the cash is in the final installment. So those are future values. And then the, my table is different from Hull's because I've inserted the discount factors. So a discount factor is just a number we can multiply by $1 received in the future. What would it be worth today? So $1 six months in the future at this spot rate this compounded continuously has a value of 97.53 cents. So that this becomes a multiplier on the future value. Now, an advantage over discount factors is that they, they already impound the information of the compound frequency. So whereas the 5% itself is ambiguous until we specify continuous compounding, the discount factor is not ambiguous. The old saying is discount factors never lie. And so for a continuous compounding, because we've been told it's continuous compounding, I'll just show we use the natural exponential function e or E raised to the negative rate multiplied by the maturity and we get the single discount factor, and we, then we would call this here a six-month discount factor because it's the multiple multiplier we'd apply to a cash flow received six months in the future. So that means we have a one-year discount factor, an 18-month discount factor, and a two-year discount factor. The set of discount factors is called a discount function. 
Now, given the discount factors, which themselves never lie and also already impound the compound information, we're able to simply multiply the future value multiplied by the discount factor and we get the present value of the cash flow. So that we now have a series, a stream, if you will, of present valued cash flows. And if we sum those, we get the theoretical price of the bond. In other words, in a perfect financial world where the prices equaled the discounted cash flows, discounted at spot rates or zero rates, spot and zero are synonyms for our purposes here, then this is the price we would get. We get the theoretical price. That's important because we actually don't expect the traded price to equal the theoretical price due to technical factors like supply, demand, and liquidity. Those are my favorite technical factors. Supply and demand and liquidity will cause these actual bonds to trade rich or trade cheap. Okay, so we've got the theoretical price. We used zero rates, which again are, we I could have called these spot rates as well. And the only other thing I wanted to mention was that We've assumed these zero rates, well, they are given to us in Hull with continuous compounding. If we use our calculator to price the bond, probably we're going to get a different number because it's less natural to use these interest rates or to assume they are with continuous compounding. It's more natural to assume they are discrete. And so specifically, then I'm just going to change the assumption here and pretend for a second that these are spot rates with semi-annual compounding, and I'll keep the values the same. If this 5% is now per annum with semi-annual compounding, then my discount factor would be computed differently, right? So I'll do that now. Then I would say one plus the spot rate of 5%. I'm gonna assume with semi-annual compounding to match the timing of the cash flows. And then I would raise this to the power of negative the maturity multiplied by two to be consistent. I divide it by the rate by two. So I multiply it by the maturity by two to acknowledge that we're compounding semi-annually or twice per year. And I get a slightly different discount factor. I ripple that down. And now my discount function reflects the assumption of semi-annual compounding. But the advantage is I still get to use, I still multiply the same future value by the discount factor. So this simple product is the same or the formula is the same. However, you can see my present value is slightly higher um, because we've now assumed that the spot rates are with semi-annual compounding. But then this nevertheless is a valid theoretical price of the bond using these spot rates. And then this is what I would expect you to get if you use the calculator to solve this problem. So I hope that's helpful.